Welcome. David and I have been excited to talk about this topic because it's been something we've been working on behind the scenes for quite some time. And if you're like-minded folk like us where you think laziness is a virtue and uh, you like to get more done while doing less work and automating as much as possible along the way, then you're in the right place because we are going to show you exactly how you can use Google BigQuery to really improve everything within your agency, but specifically three pillars. Number one, improving your profit margins by getting more out of your staff's time, meaning instead of having them continuously logging into analytics, pulling data, formatting, using all those macros and stuff in Excel, forget that. What we want your staff to do, our staff to do really, is focus on the thinking, focus on the strategy, focus on solving problems, not data entry, things that not only wear them down, but are just not profitable for your agency. So we can get a lot more from the people on our team by leveraging the power of BigQuery. I'm gonna show you exactly how we can do that. Also, just kind of piggybacking off that, increasing your team's output. So again, instead of having them getting lost in the data and spending eight hours trying to format a technical audit or something along those lines, BigQuery can automate all that for you. Just put the audit on their plate and again, allow them to look at it, analyze it, and communicate that to the client to just get more done, which does so much in terms of improving the quality of life for your staff, just reducing burnout. And again, having them focus on things that are what they signed up to do, which is marketing and sales and not pulling data and wrangling data and all those really boring things that again, like I said, lead to burnout. And number three is to close more proposals with larger clients by creating unique value and capabilities for your agency. This is something that really my agency, Webris, the reason why we were able to sell it was because of all the unique capabilities and processes that we built. And at that time, this is about four years ago now, it wasn't in BigQuery, it was all in Sheets. BigQuery, uh, we adopted about a year ago, we started migrating all those processes and tools up to BigQuery, and now they're like 10 times as powerful. And what you can do with this is once all your data is in BigQuery, you're able to create these different types of outputs, whether it's like a technical SEO report or just a monthly status report or a funnel visualization. Once all the data is up there, you can push that out in any way that you choose. You are literally able to create your own little pieces of software in a sense, uh, little tools that really attract enterprise level clients. Because if you want to go and pitch like a target.com, it's not enough to just pitch them keyword research or pitch them Facebook ads. You've got to have some sort of unique value. And this allows you to do that without having to go out and spend 200 grand to get some tool built. We're literally building little mini pieces of software within a matter of days uh, and they're custom to exactly what we want. So we're creating this massive amount of unique value for our clients that they love and allows us to go in and pitch against much larger agencies, uh, but with a lot less overhead and a lot less actual kind of firepower in the traditional sense. But I'm telling you, by the end of this, you'll understand why clients love this and it really helps you close more proposals. Before we get into the video, I wanna just run through some sample statements that I'm constantly hearing from all the agency consultations that we do. And I wanna kinda of let these resonate with you because if they do sound familiar to you, then I'm really gonna implore you to watch the rest of this video because everything that I'm gonna talk about is gonna help you solve all these things. So number one, we're not closing enough proposals. I just kinda of spoke about this. You're putting all this time into proposals, qualifying the leads, putting together the actual physical proposal, and then losing the pitch. I spend a ton of time working with agencies and I can tell you this is a very common problem that we all have. And sometimes these things are just out of your hand, right? Maybe the budget wasn't right, the timing wasn't right, uh, you know, they're just shopping around with a bunch of agencies kicking tires. That's fine. I'm not talking about those instances. I'm talking about the, the times when you put together that great pitch and you thought you were going to win and you lost it. And the reason you're not closing those proposals is simple. You did not pitch enough value. If you want to win more contracts, you have to really prove your value for what you're charging for your retainer. And if you're able to show different unique capabilities in things that are different from what other, all those other agencies are pitching those standard out of the box deliverables, I promise you, you're going to close a lot more proposals. This one really just piggybacks off the previous statement. We're struggling to close and attract enterprise accounts. You can read any book on business or agencies and they'll tell you the same thing. It's really hard to grow and scale your agency if you're working with small retainers and small accounts. I actually had a friend who I just interviewed recently where he was talking about the transition that I had to make from small business to enterprise. And he said that small business is like crack or cocaine. Uh, it's high, you get highly addicted to it, highly reliant on it, but ultimately it's really bad for you. So bottom line, if you want to scale your agency past seven figures and up, you've got to work with bigger accounts. You've got to be getting paid more. And generally speaking, getting paid more comes from a few sources. Number one is referrals. Number two is 
reputation. And number three is having those unique capabilities. So I'm not going to beat this horse to death because I've already talked about this a few times now in this short video. But if you're able to leverage the power of BigQuery, as I've mentioned, you're going to have these very unique capabilities that nobody else in the world can touch because only your agency can do it. Only your agency can deliver on that. And we'll walk you through that process as we go throughout this video. We're not able to create a competitive advantage in the market. You probably don't want to hear this, but at the end of the day, agencies, we're all selling the same thing. Rankings, ROAS, more traffic, more clients, etc. But as you grow in this game, you realize it's not just about what you're doing in the output of your service. It's also about how you're doing it. Meaning your communication, better deliverables, speed, agility. All these things mean higher retainers and larger clients. Companies want to work with an agency that's going to take a unique approach to solving their marketing problems. Now, a traditional approach to this is going out and building some unique piece of software that only your agency owns. Trust me, you do not want to go down this route. We have spent over $250,000 in the past trying to build a piece of software that never came to market. It was a huge fumble. And that's when we started looking at BigQuery as a solution. And my God, was it a game changer. We were able to literally build the exact same piece of software that we were trying to build in React in BigQuery in three days, three days, three days. And the cost was a few thousand dollars. It's just absurd what you can do if you're open to thinking a little bit differently about solving the same problems. Another very common pain point is we're spending too much time wrangling data for reporting analysis. So again, it's not just the fact that you have to check analytics and search console and Facebook ads and YouTube and all that stuff. You usually have to export that data and then format it and then re-report on it, analyze it and communicate it. I already mentioned how this beats down your staff. It's just not fun work for anybody to do. But also this work often goes on build. You don't think about the eight hours that it takes to pull and manipulate all this data. You're usually just getting paid for the analysis and the deliverable, right? So by migrating all your data into BigQuery, having that all in one place, you don't have to do that. <laughs> all you have to do is you set up these outputs, what we call recipes, and these are all the reports and audits that you need. You just spend your time looking at those, thinking about them and communicating. So we're, again, getting back to this concept of we're getting paid to solve problems. We're not getting paid to wrangle data, right? That's why nobody wants to pay for that type of stuff. But when you're running an agency, these are the things that you need to track because we're really selling people's times at an agency. Whether you work on time and materials, whether you work on value-based pricing, there's still the element of time factor that goes into that when we're talking about understanding and managing our operations. So if we're able to cut that out, we don't have to bill for it and it doesn't have to go on track because it's just gone. We're literally saving a ton of time and just getting paid for what we want to get paid for, what the client wants to pay for. And lastly, our reports and client deliverables are subpar. This is another very common trap that agencies fall into. You end up defaulting to like a Moz report or an SEM rush report or just like exporting Facebook ads data into a spreadsheet. I have friends all the time that send me reports from their agencies and I'm just like pulling my hair out. I'm like, what the F are these agencies doing? They're just, they're sending you screenshots. There's no work going in here and this is what you're, you're paying for and ultimately creates a riff with clients. Using BigQuery and using the system allows you to create world-class deliverables, again, that nobody else is doing, that are unique to your agency. It gives you something to stand on. It gives you a value proposition to pitch for. It's something that you can put all over your website, all in your proposals, all throughout your sales conversations. We are the only agency that can do this type of analysis. I'm telling you, it is a game changer for everything within your agency. So I apologize for, for, for being on my soapbox there for a minute. I just, I really want to make sure that I'm driving home these concepts because this is all brand new. I'm 99% of you have probably never heard of BigQuery before. So I really need to make sure that you understand how this can impact your agency before we get into it. So specifically, I'm going to cover exactly what BigQuery is and how it can have a massive positive impact on your agency. I'm going to cover a bunch of use cases for exactly how we're using BigQuery deployed at our agency. I'm going to show you the reports and audits that we built and exactly how we deliver those to clients. And then I'm going to show you an over the shoulder look at these analyses, uh, audits and reports. We call them recipes. So I'm going to explain to you how we import the data into BigQuery and then how we push that out to different things. And we call that push a recipe. And I'm going to show you exactly what some of those look like and how we analyze these things. And then finally, how you can learn BigQuery absolutely free or potentially how you might be able to work with us so we can help you to push this platform into your agency. So real quick, if, if, if we've never met before, my name is Ryan Stewart. Uh, I have over 10 years of experience building companies and servicing clients. Uh, I've worked with really big clients like Best Buy, Target, as well as a ton of small businesses and startups. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur. I've built 
five companies now. Um, I've sold three of them. I sold my agency, Webris, and again, a lot of these systems were a reason for the sale. Uh, I have another agency now that we're now running completely on these systems. Our margins are ridiculous. I'm gonna talk all about that. I had an e-commerce store, Laces Out, that I sold. I had a, a WordPress plugin capture and convert that we just sold two months ago now. Um, I also own the Blueprint Training. Uh, we have about 2,000 agencies in there. Agencies are, are, are what I do, it's what I'm passionate about. So uh, that's why I'm the one who's giving this presentation. Now my business partner here, David Krevit, he's really the brains behind all this. He's the one who uh, who is a, basically an automation expert. He created the company Coding is for Losers. That's what we're uh, doing this under now. All this stuff is under the guise of Coding is for Losers. He's a data and analytics and automation expert. Um, he's got over 10 years of experience as well. He used to work at BlackRock Capital. He was also employee number, I believe, two at Podia. He knows a ton of coding languages, SQL, Python, uh, pretty much every single automation language that there is, APIs. He's the one who built this entire system. I'm just kind of the marketer that was fortunate enough to partner with him. So David is actually gonna be joining me on this video presentation. He's gonna be going through more of the technical aspects of BigQuery uh, to help you understand, again, the complete life cycle of what we've been doing. So let's just start off very basic, like what the F is Google BigQuery? This is a screenshot of the platform. David's actually got a, a little presentation he's gonna show you on exactly what it looks like. But in a nutshell, BigQuery is a cloud-based data warehouse for storing and processing large data sets. So for example, if you're, if you're trying to do a large analysis in Google Sheets or Excel, like a million rows of data, what happens? It's either really slow or it just crashes. BigQuery allows you to port all that data up there and to do all the processing up there at lightning speed. So there's no limit to the amount of data you can push up there. And then what's also cool is you can do all your data formatting up there. So uh, it was designed to analyze billions of rows of data using SQL. So again, you can do these analyses outside of it, but it would take you hours and days, if not weeks, to try and write these analyses where BigQuery, you just kind of write the analyses up there and it does it automatically in this cloud processing engine. And then you're able to consume this data uh, and whatever you want. We like to use Sheets and Data Studio. These are, these are our main uh, kind of like visualization stacks, but if you use Tableau, Looker, I mean literally pretty much any visualization tool out there, you can sync it with BigQuery using some Python, which again is what David's specialty is. Um, and it allows you to, again, push all this data up here, process it, format it, all the stuff that you'd be doing manually, it does it automatically in BigQuery, and then it pushes out into these visualizations that you're able to report, audit, all these different sorts of things. So I'm gonna let David give us an over the shoulder of exactly what BigQuery looks like. Google BigQuery is an extremely fast, scalable and inexpensive data warehouse in the cloud from Google. And our team uses it to basically get out of aggregating data in Sheets instead of everyone on our team, you know, having their own copies of Sheets for everything. We store all of our raw data in Google BigQuery. So whether that's, you know, say Google Analytics data or Search Console, or Facebook ads, whatever data that we're using for sales and marketing, um, we get all of that into Google BigQuery, it lives here, and then we use it downstream in a few different ways. Um, and we love Google BigQuery for this because if you're already using the Google Stack, right, if you're using Google Sheets, if you're using Google Data Studio, uh, BigQuery will plug right into this stack. So you can use BigQuery as your kind of data warehouse to just store all of your data, make sure you're not overwriting anything, right? And kind of having one source of truth across your entire team. Um, but then the non, you know, less technical users on your team who aren't necessarily comfortable writing, you know, SQL to query out data, they can still use Google Sheets. They can still use Google Data Studio um, and just have reporting or your you know, ad hoc analyses, reading this underlying data in Google BigQuery. So the first thing we do is we get all of our data together, you know, and there's tons of different ways to get data into BigQuery, and we'll talk about that separately. Um, but once it's there, you can do a few things. One, you can you know, basically run queries and save those results to Google Sheets, um, copy them to your clipboard and just paste them there, right? It's very easy to get data out of BigQuery into Sheets. Um, and similarly, it's very easy to get data out of BigQuery and into uh, Data Studio. So you can immediately explore a table or a query result in Data Studio. You can make entire reports that read your BigQuery data. Um, and so it's just extremely easy to integrate 
with the rest of the Google stack. Frankly, if you're if you're picking a cloud data warehouse and you use Google Sheets and the, the other Google tools, it would be silly to use any other data warehouse. Appreciate that, David. So let's talk a little bit more about why. So we've we've covered a bunch of kind of the benefits, but specifically on more of the tech, technical, why should you use BigQuery um, as kind of a part of your stack? So number one, the ability to unify all of your data into one place. Again, think about how much data that your agency is using. You have your analytics data, search console data, AdWords data, YouTube data, literally every single marketing and sales platform you can push into this one database in here and across all your clients as well too. Think about that. Instead of having to do all this on a per client basis, it's all up there and it's a bit able to be pushed out on, on, on command on, on whenever you want really. So there's limited, limitless data processing. Again, no more crash spreadsheets, no more waiting and slow spreadsheets. It's all done up there. You don't have to do any of this stuff anymore if you leverage this. And also this is important too, especially if you're working with larger organizations, it's complete data privacy. So meaning you own all the data up there. Nobody else has access to it. You're not having to click any weird terms of services like with all these tools that you probably don't even realize. It's all in BigQuery, it's private and you own it. So again, if you're working with a lot of larger uh, organizations, attorneys, anyone who's working with really private data, you can rest assured that nobody else will see this. It's just yours, you own the database. So I'm gonna let David add a little bit of color on top of that. Let's cover why, like what, what in our experience have we gotten from making this move to BigQuery? I think the first thing is just data size right? Like we cannot handle um, data at the size that we need to in a Google Sheet. So just the 5 million cell limit, well, it's much better than the 2 million cell limit there was before. There's just some, you know, you reach a data size that you just can't handle in a spreadsheet. And at that point, you need a database like BigQuery. Uh, the second is speed. So sheets can slow down. Uh, they just they just do, you can, uh, well, partially, you know, it can be our own fault, right? My own fault for writing, you know, inefficient formulas. And I know Ben has a, a great post on how to speed up um, formulas and sheets or how to kind of optimize for speed. But at some point, uh, if you want to run more complex functions, looking at, you know, regex and stuff like that, it'll just run faster over a large amount of data if you're in a database like BigQuery. And the last thing is complexity. Um, so, you know, I think things like uh, areas like machine learning and, and more advanced statistical analysis, uh, they're a little buzzwordy, right? In practice, we don't, I, to be honest, I haven't seen a ton of companies or digital agencies like really implementing them effectively. So I think they're a bit of a ways off, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep your options open to try them, right? At least have the flexibility to spin them up quickly if you decide you need to. So having data in BigQuery gives you the flexibility to try these new things, right? To run R scripts, to run Python scripts, to write you know, user-defined functions in, in BigQuery SQL. Stuff like that, you know, take advantage of BigQuery's ML, you know, built-in ML capability, right? You can't take advantage of stuff like that until your data um, is in BigQuery. Right, and there's tons. There's never been more ways to get data into BigQuery, so it's not like, you know, that's a, that's a, not a huge thing to do. So let's talk a little bit about your current setup, right? You've got, uh, let's say, you got your deep crawl SEM rush. You're doing a lot of SEO, Search Console, Moz, Google Analytics, HubSpot, all of these data platforms, right? And there's more in there too. This is just as much as I can fit on this little screenshot here. There's more of these as well. Uh, they're all disjointed. They don't talk to each other. And that's the way that they were built, right? These companies want you to go into their platform, use, use their UX, use their UI. They don't really want to talk to other tools. They want to build all these all in one tools. But in reality, none of these tools are enough. You know that we need pretty much all these tools, but the problem is that they operate in a silo. But the beautiful thing about BigQuery is that it's non-biased, meaning we're not trying to compete with these tools. What we want to do is we just, we, want, we all want to get along here, guys. So you can add in all the data that you want. You can use your Omniture data, your Bing Ads data, your analytics data, LinkedIn data, anything that has an API realistically, you can put into a BigQuery database. And again, we push the API into this big data warehouse into BigQuery, right? So all the data just sits and rests up here. After that, uh, we are able to apply data modeling up there, meaning uh, there's different logic that we can apply, there's different formatting that we can apply. That's all done in BigQuery. 
and the end result is spit out into whatever biz platforms you use. Like I said, our main stack is Data Studio and Sheets. That's what we're most comfortable with. Um, you know, I, I, I firmly believe that as marketers, Sheets or Excel is the most powerful this tool that we can use because most of our analyses happens there. But again, the problem with Sheets and Excel is that we have to spend so much time trying to format it and pull it. It's all done. You just get a finalized report, audit, and sheets uh, delivered and scheduled however you want. If you want it daily, if you want it weekly, if you want it monthly, quarterly, whatever you want and however you want it, BigQuery can do that for you. So again, what we're doing, if you think about it, we're taking all this data from all of our favorite platforms. We don't need to create anything new. Why reinvent the wheel? Why build software when there's already every piece of amazing software that we need? Are we going to go out and invent more data? No, we're not. I just want Ahrefs link data, but I want... Uh, SEM rushes keyword data, and I want analytics engagement data, and I want search consoles click data, but I want AdWords uh, keyword data, right? Why go out and try and build something that does all that when we can get all that stuff for pretty much free? Uh, pull it into a database and then push it out into a visualization or tool that we want. So specifically, how can your agency use BigQuery? So we like to use, like I said, as a centralized data warehouse for all of our clients' data. So we don't really have to worry about data wrangling. Yes, we'll still, still do one-off analyses in uh, analytics, or we'll still do one-off analyses in Sightbulb, right? These tools still have their, they still have their purpose within our stack. We're not asking you to remove that stack. We're basically asking you to build on top of it to create better reports, better deliverables, and better audits for your agency. And again, as I just kind of said, BigQuery does not require you to scrap what you currently have. It's really an enhancement. And uh, I think David can speak about this a little bit better. So David, why don't, why don't you tell them a little bit more about how BigQuery fits into their stack? So the the whole ecosystem here has evolved so much, as, as many of you know, um, over the last few years, to the point where there's now a, a native connector from Google for Sheets and BigQuery, uh, Codings for Losers, we published our own connector that allows you to push data up to BigQuery, um, pull it back down into Sheets. There's a bunch of other Google Sheets add-ons and connectors that allow you to bridge this gap, right? And I'm sure many of you are already using Google Data Studio for reporting. So making the move to BigQuery is not a unilateral kind of like <laughs> switch and, oh, we just don't use Sheets anymore. No, that's, that's not really the way it works. For us, it's just another tool in the tool belt, an additional scaling uh, option, and you end up using it as your data warehouse. But we still use the rest of the, you know, kind of G Suite, more standard ecosystem as we did before, you know, because most of, most of the folks that we're setting up BigQuery recipes or data pipelines for aren't necessarily technical people. So that's a, you know one thing I really want to get across. It's not like about leaving things behind. It's about just adding a tool to your tool belt. So how do we actually push this into practice with our agency? We developed something that we call the agency data pipeline. That agency data pipeline uh, is basically uh, a streamlined version of everything that we've talked about to date. And there's three major outputs of what we do. So the first is obviously a, a BigQuery database, right? So piping all of our data, you know, wrangling all the data that we need into a BigQuery database. Um, it contains all the raw data um, before it's formatted and all that stuff. After that, we apply some SQL transformations to turn this raw data into metrics. These are data models, right? So we're taking all this data and we're applying the logic that we want, right? Just like you'd be doing in Sheets or Excel uh, or Data Studio or Looker, we're applying all that logic within BigQuery so we don't have to do it and so it's automated, right? And then the final part is going to be the outputs, right? So it could be a Data Studio template, it could be a Sheets template, it could be a Tableau uh, dashboard, it could be a Power BI dashboard, whatever it is that you like to use your agency to visualize, this is ultimately the output. So all this together, we call this the agency data pipeline. And these are the three main outputs of that data pipeline. Again, I think David can speak to more of the technical side of this. So David, why don't you take over and give them a little bit over the shoulder of, of what this pipeline actually can look like. A very common uh, problem is for anyone who's doing marketing uh, online is you're advertising across all these different platforms. How do you get your data together into one place so you can look at you know, all of your line items in one place, how much you spend on Google ads, how much you spend on Facebook ads in one table versus having to open up, you know, the two different dashboards and, and look at them separately. So that problem is obviously, it's a large problem if you are working at a single company and you have one of each account, right? It's, it's annoying. If you're a digital agency and you have 50 clients and you have 200 accounts that you're managing, uh, it's intractable. 
you just really can't do it in any super organized way, or it's very, very difficult to do it in an organized way and consistent way in spreadsheets. Um, so what we basically confronted this, this problem as it came to us, right? So we're working with a digital agency in California. Um, we're helping them build these, you know, dashboards in Google Sheets and Data Studio. And at some point realized we had the scaling issue and how are we gonna get around this? Uh, so we evolved this process that we call the agency data pipeline. And basically, Mariah, if we can switch back to the um, screen here. Basically what it is, is a bridge between Google Sheets and BigQuery. So we made a, what we call the tracking plan, right? This has all of an agency's data in Sheets. And I think this is probably the best example that we've put together of how do Sheets and BigQuery interact and how you can use one as a bridge to the other. So basically this tracking plan has settings for um, everything that you'd ever want to set up. And it, this is just a template, so it doesn't have data in it, unfortunately. But this you would fill out with all of your sites um, and all of the data feeds, right? So if you want you know, Facebook ads or Google ads data feed, all of your account mappings and conversion goals, and basically all of the indicative data uh, that you would need in here. Um, and then you know, this sheet is set up. We have a Google Apps Script uh, connection that's set up that will push data up to um, BigQuery on a schedule. And we have triggers in the back end that will push this data, these settings, right, from Sheets up to BigQuery. And then toggling to a little SQL model here. So then we'll basically write SQL models that will pull in these settings from Google Sheets. And why this is really important is a non-technical user at a digital agency can go into a sheet, um, set up some new settings, right? Some new Google Analytics channel mappings or something like that. Set up those settings. Those get ingested into BigQuery. And then in the SQL models, you know, we, we just ingest those downstream. So for a non-technical user to interface with BigQuery, they can use sheets, right? As their kind of form, as their data entry vehicle. And then those can automatically be ingested. And in the case of like Google Analytics, this is why I love DBT and, and why I highly recommend it. DBT allows you to use what's called Jinja uh, syntax or notation. I'm not exactly sure what the, the technical term for it is, but it's called Jinja. And uh, you can write you know, for loops and if statements and set variables uh, that will generate your SQL models for you. Um, and you know, at Coding for Loser, we've published a bunch of you know, kind of open source uh, data models for uh, common data sources, right? So Facebook ads, uh, Google ads or AdWords, Shopify, stuff like that. There are tons of examples on the Coding is for Losers blog uh, that you can pick up and use. So what I want to transition now into is what we call recipes. So recipes are the analysis templates that are the output of, of this entire pipeline, right? So I showed you this visual before. This is really what we call a, one of our advertising recipes, right? This is basically all advertising data that gets pushed into BigQuery, and then we visualize it in a Data Studio report. We call that a recipe. So what you call these outputs, recipes, is just kind of a, a, a cute little way of, of, of giving these things name, kind of like if you go to a sandwich shop and uh, you know you always order the pastrami and they, know, they, they name a sandwich the Ryan, right? You walk in, you know exactly what you're getting, that's what you're ordering. That's how we approach these data pipelines and the outputs of them. We don't just kind of randomly push out data to different things. We build these very specific recipes um, um, that allow us to use these repeatable kind of processes across all of our clients, repeatable analyses, repeatable audits. And this is what I really want to focus the rest of this presentation on because uh, this ultimately, these recipes are really where you're getting the most value out of. The BigQuery database is, is a very powerful thing, but ultimately the outputs of the BigQuery database is really where you're going to win and ultimately where you can be able to charge the most to your clients for. So let's jump in and talk about uh, a few recipes. Number one is the website quality audit. This is one that we have been working on for years now, um, it started as a content audit and really turned into pretty much uh, the only SEO audit that you'll ever need. So the data that goes into this uh, website quality audit is a full deep crawl site scrape. So a full crawl uh, along with all the awesome data that deep crawl brings. There's actually a surprising amount of data, everything from uh, you know page titles to word count to uh, canonical links to 
schema markups on the page. We pull all that in, right? Very important data. Then we go to Google Analytics and we pull in uh, all sorts of traffic data, engagement data, bounce rate, um, time on site, conversion data, if it's e-commerce, lead generation, all that stuff, we bring all that into the database as well. Then we go to Search Console, uh, we get impressions data, we get clicks data, and we get click-through rate data, we pull that all in. We then hit Majestic, we get uh, a link data, we get trust flow and citation flow data, and then we go to SCM Rush and we pull in keyword data so we can see how a page is performing. So, so that's the raw data that we pull in. Next is the data modeling. So once we have all this data up there, how do we what do we want to do with it, right? Do we want to just dump it out? No, we want to apply some data models to it so we can format it and we can get it to how we want pre-baked for our analyses. So basically what we did is we mapped the URL data from all sources, leaving you with an SEO data map. So basically using the crawl, we have every single URL on the website. Then pinning to each URL, we've crossed, and if you visualize this in Excel, we've got traffic data, link data, uh, click the rate data, page title data, literally every single piece of SEO data you could ever need combined at the URL level. So basically what this allows us to do is make decisions about what to do with every single page on a website from an SEO point of view. But on top of that, that's why it's awesome working with David because he's just so damn smart, is he wrote logic into BigQuery. Logic meaning we're making decisions based on the inputs that we give it. Not quite at the AI ML level, but kind of a basic introductory concept to that, which we can then apply ML to in the future if we want to. Meaning what we do is uh, two things really is that with all that data, right? If you have every single piece of SEO data that you need for a URL on your website, you're able to make a very informed decision about it. Do you want to redirect it? Do you want to delete it? Do you want to build links to it? Do you want to update the on-page? Do you want to do queued research? We know that by looking and analyzing the data for that, right? If the keyword rankings are falling, uh, if the page doesn't have enough links, if um, the traffic is falling, if it doesn't have any conversions, if, it, if it's a blank page, maybe we just wanted to delete it, right? Um, so what we're able to do is auto assign what we call URL actions to each page, right? So it goes through and it makes a decision for us on how we want to handle each page on the website. So imagine if you think about how long that would take you to do that manually. If you've got a, a 10,000 page website, e-commerce website, and you don't know how to take the first step for SEO, you can run this and this report will tell you everything to do for that page. Really powerful stuff. But on top of that, <laughs> it also assigns a page type. Right, so it'll if it's a blog post, it'll tag it. If it's a resource page, it'll tag it. If it's an about page, it'll tag it as a site info page. If it's a product page, it'll tag it as a product page. Why does that matter? Because we can't compare apples to oranges when it comes to data analysis and marketing, right? You can't compare a product page to a contact page. So by auto tagging that page, again, based on the input, David just wrote a ton of scripts for it to recognize what a page looks like. We can segment our analysis. We can only look at blog posts and do a content on it. We can only look at product pages and do a product analysis, right? is really, really powerful stuff that again, think about how much time it would take you to go through a 10,000 plus page website and tag every page. We can automate that in BigQuery, done. So the final part is two pieces of visualization. Number one is a Google Sheets template, uh, again, which is kind of like your traditional SEO audit and then a Google Data Studio report that we use to track overall site health. So so the final part of this is just giving you some quick use cases before we jump in. We like to run this. Uh, the first thing that we do for a client is run this report, the website quality audit. It, it, it's literally, we call it the Swiss Army knife of reports. <laughs> the most powerful thing that we can do for a client, it's incredibly impactful. Um, and then what we do also is we use this audit to push into the next part of the campaign. So again, using the pages to segment, uh, we'll segment by blog posts, make a copy of the file, and then do a content audit three months down the line. Uh, we'll segment the product pages and we'll do cute research on those the next week, right? So we're able to use this report to segment and push into the next parts of the campaign, but we'll also refresh this data monthly. So we'll automatically run this report every month so the client can see the progress that we've made. And again, it's all automated. <laughs> we literally sign up a client, click a few buttons. This report is generated. Think about that in a second. This custom report that the client thinks we spent 20 hours on is generated in a matter of you know hours and then we've also got it refreshed monthly so it's kind of used as like a site health report every month so let me show you exactly what this looks like so what you're looking at here is the spreadsheet version of it so uh you the column a here is what we've got the url action so these are the different url actions that we've assigned to it these are all based on the type uh basically how we want to handle each page on the website if we want to 301 it canonicalize it just leave it as is because it's good if we want to update the on page target with links etc and these decisions are made based on the data right so again what this report does is it pulls in literally every piece of SEO data that we could need. Here's the automatic category post that I was talking about, but it pulls in status codes. It pulls in if the page is indexable or not. So again, if a page is not indexable and it should be, 
then we can tag it to index it, or we can tag it to do something else with it. We can tag it to migrate it, or if the page is not index or indexable and it shouldn't be, then we can tag it to no index it, right? So like an author page, for example, the pa this page adds absolutely no value to the client's website. So let's no index it, right? We actually had them deleted. So the point being is that if there's a bunch of different cruff pages on the website, you can use this as like a, a, a cleanup, right? You can go through and clean up all the crap pages on the website. It t pulls through the parent URL, the page depth, right? Because most of the time you want to have a, a, your pages a certain number of clicks from the website, uh, for, sorry, from the homepage. Uh, if the page is within the site map, it pulls through the main keyword, which is awesome, the volume, the ranking, the best keyword too. So it pulls in two different types of keyword, the main keyword meaning uh, the one with the highest search volume, the best keyword meaning the one with the highest ranking. It pulls in uh, impressions, sessions, page view, uh, conversions. If it's e-commerce, it'll pull through that as well. Bounce rate, time on page. If the page is losing traffic, the number of links it has, the click-through rate from the SERPs, uh, the page type, the page title, the meta, the H1, the word count, the canonical link, uh, the number of in-links to the page, the number of out-links to the page. And you can add more or remove from this if you want. That's the beauty of this is, is what I'm trying to really push to you guys too is that this is how we use it, but imagine how you could use it. Imagine if you had every single piece of SEO data that you needed in one report. What would you do with it? It's up to you. We're not going to tell you how to do it. That's the beauty of BigQuery and using this system. So the next thing here is the data city report. So this is a seven page report that we built. It's constantly evolving too. Um, and again, if you have multiple clients here, you can run this for your entire portfolio. Imagine this report for your entire clients delivered every single month without you having to lift a finger. Do you, I'm trying to get you guys, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but I really want you to feel my excitement on this because it's really changed the game for us. Um, so what this what this report does um, is it basically aggregates all this stuff, right? Because you don't want to send a, a massive spreadsheet like this to the client. They'll probably fall asleep looking at it. So what we've done is we've aggregated this to give them kind of like a site health check. The number of uh, new crawl pages this month, click the rate changes, sessions, kind of like a just a overall traffic status report. Um, it blending uh, different sessions versus uh, conversion rates so they can see how that performs. This is really dope too. This is pulling from the categories. Remember I said we automatically tag the page category. This is showing us how they perform. If you wanna just look at how your blog pages are performing, if you added new content that month, if they added new pages, this will automatically do that for you. So you don't have to manually hand jam reports anymore. It will give you a summary by page. I mean, <clears throat> we actually have a free, you can actually look at this. I'm not gonna kind of kill you guys here. Uh, underneath this video, I've got these linked so you can actually check them out. We're, we're giving them away for free because you can't run them without BigQuery, so it doesn't really matter to us. Uh, but you can go through this and you can see all the different types of reports that are in here. And again, you can see how this is pulling from BigQuery. But again, this is just how we have it. If you wanna change it, you're free to do that. This is a free country, and that's why we use the system. Unlike if you run like a SEMrush report, you're stuck with what they give you, right? You don't like how they count their links, too bad. You're stuck with them. Not here. If you don't like how SMRush counts links, pull it in from Oz, pull it in from Ahrefs, pull it in from Majestic, pull it in from Search Console, right? You're able to, to kind of manipulate your data based on the data that you like. So again, I'll let you guys go through this data studio report on your own. It's linked to from below this. All the reports that I'm going to go through are. You can check out it on your own time. We've also got this really good blog post that we wrote that just kind of details the website quality on in a lot more detail. I'll also link to that too, just so you can see kind of more of the logic um, and exactly how we use it. Again, I, I'm trying to keep this video kind of as to the point as possible. I don't want to kill you guys. We have a longer video specifically on this audit that you guys can check out. So that was a live look at the website quality audit. Another recipe that I want to share with you guys, that was an SEO focused one, right? Let's talk about an advertising one, right? Let's say you're doing a lot of advertising or let's say you're doing both SEO and advertising. Imagine having all your data in one place so you didn't have to have two siloed teams uh, who couldn't communicate to each other because they were looking at different data. This one pulls in pretty much every piece of data that you're using from any advertising platforms to get a clear picture of your ROAS or in other words, your return on ad spend. So uh, what this pulls together is the ad set, ad and URL level data and pulls through a bunch of data from analytics tools. So again, Google ads, Bing ads, Facebook ads, Twitter ads, LinkedIn ads, Google analytics, Adobe analytics, any ad platform that you're using, could be YouTube ads too, whatever ad platform you're using, as long as it has an API, we can pull it in here. The data models that it runs is uh, basically, it's really hard as you guys know to, to get good uh, data on how different ad platforms are performing because they use different KPIs, they use different metrics, all that stuff. So we apply these data models to basically, uh, I guess normalize the data in a sense, but consolidate it into a single view so you're able to look at all of your advertising data in one place. So all of your ad platform data, your analytics data, and your CRM data too, right? It's not just the front end data, it's not just the on-site data, it's also how does that 
ad perform after it becomes a lead or after it becomes a customer, you can pull that in here too. Again, there's really nothing else on the market that can do that because they don't have access to this much data. So we just choose to visualize this in a data studio uh, report, uh, but you're free to do so however you want. So let's jump in and take a look at it. So again, this is an 11 page report. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. Uh, it's also linked to below this video so you can take a live look at it yourself. You'll get access to this exact thing. But basically, again, the analyses that we're trying to do here are not just your standard kind of out of the box. I can log into Facebook ads and get this stuff. This is all about blending. This is all about taking as much data as possible and getting the at, uh, the insights that we need. So this is uh, one that talks about the last touch, right? What was the last touch platform that drove the sale? This one's talking about uh, ad spend and snapshot by channel. You can apply different segments to it. All of these different uh, basically data sources you can segment by traffic and revenue by channel. Again, uh, shows AdWords, sessions, conversion rates. And again, this data is, is not exactly accurate because this is just a, this is a demo dashboard that we built. Um, and some of the platforms are not fully active at this moment. So the data is a little bit null there. Uh, but again, as long as you have all this data, this is done for you. So imagine just being able to plug all of your data sources into this 11 page done for you template. So there's all, as I said, there's 11 pages in here. You can check them out on your own time, purchase pass, buyer segments, uh, skew different skew purchase based on advertising so again just for context too is that think about the power of this report think about how happy your client would be to have this report and think about if you could go to a client during a pitch and show this to them and tell them that you're the only agency in the world that can get this kind of insights there's <laughs> imagine you go to a target and you you present them with this type of report number one you tell them that you, they're using bigquery and they get all excited because you're using a power platform right a, a, a big data platform sorry which is a big buzzword and then you're also telling them that you can visualize this data in any way that you choose and guys any help that you need i'm, I'm going to show you how to do this but any help that you need we're standing by to help you out as well to build these capabilities for you that's literally what coding is for losers does we help agencies build these unique capabilities in house using BigQuery. So uh, we're standing by to help you guys out. And again, you can check out this full report by just hitting the link below when you get a minute. So the final recipe that I want to share with you guys is a Shopify buyer segmentation. So the data that we get here uh, is pulling from this one's a very simple one It's pulling from Shopify and Google Analytics. Anyone who's ever worked with Shopify before knows how poor the reporting is, how hard it is to get and manipulate the right data. So we just built this very basic recipe um, that allows us to apply the logic that we need to really understand who is coming to the website, how they're getting there and what they're buying. Very simple. It's a one page report called a conversion index, and it runs uh, very specific types of analyses that are very advanced that again, you just can't get anywhere else. It's just not possible. So the data models that we, the data models that we apply here, um, buyer level frequency, average order value and spend based on customer, the growth and retention rates for each acquisition channel, it then buckets, each buyer into a couple different segments. So frequency, how many times that customer is buying, and then revenue segment, where they fall, are they in the top, middle, or bottom? And we just choose to push this again in Data Studio. Data Studio is our, our Viz tool of choice, super easy and free, which is amazing, which is why we love it. Uh, but really what we're able to do is, is track overall site health and how different acquisition channels, paid and organic, uh, are impacting uh, buyers on, the, on our e-commerce Shopify website, uh, the overall distribution of buyer base, which channel acquired the highest spend, and then a segmented list of buyers. So let's jump over real quick and take a live look at this report. So as I said, this is uh, a one page report. Um, and again, <laughs> when you're working with larger clients who really understand the value of data and insights, if you've ever run a Shopify or e-commerce store, you know how hard it is to get this data. Trust me, we've worked with some very large e-commerce clients who have no idea how to mine this data. We're asking about things like AOV and LTV, and they don't know because they can't calculate it because they don't have the tools to do so when all in reality you need is to plug in this simple recipe and it's all done for you. So David wrote these, it's called the conversion index. Again, we have a blog post on this. I'm going to link to it as well below so you can read more about it. Uh, but basically he wrote a conversion index that helps us understand which platform is performing the best. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, forum, referral. This is all pulling from analytics and then applying this logic, which is in BigQuery to help us understand the different scorings of these. And then if that platform can scale, Again, just helping us understand the differences between each platform uh, and then all the nuances within that. So again, I'm going to link to this below. You can take a deeper look at it. I'll also link to the blog post so you can read much more about the logic and uh, how you might be able to apply this to your website. So hopefully now I've sold you on BigQuery and, and gotten you a little bit excited about it and, and interested in using it for your agency. So there's a couple of ways that you can leverage BigQuery. Number one is 
David put together a free course. Uh, it's linked to below this that will teach you exactly free, 100% free, exactly how to leverage and learn BigQuery. Uh, it's a little bit advanced. If you're not uh, a technical marketer, that's fine. David's got some really good introductory videos in there that'll bring you up to speed. Um, and it will help you again to learn BigQuery absolutely free. He's also got a course on how to build an agency data pipeline. So if you so if you wanna get a little bit more advanced after you go through the free course, we've got that course that will teach you how to build that pipeline that I just referred to you talking about and how to build your own recipes that I just showed you. Um, really what I would probably recommend though would be to just partner with us directly. Again, we work with agencies. We help you build these data pipelines internally. You pay us to do one sprint to build uh, your data pipeline. And then we work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you build these custom recipes. So again, if you've got all these ideas floating in your mind about all these tools and software that you want to build, stop right there. You'll save a ton of money and we'll have it done for you next week <laughs> to have your own basically custom suite of these recipes that again, uh, you can go to a client and pitch, or you can use some of the recipes that we built. We built a lot. You can use the website quality audit. You can use the Shopify. You can use the buyer segmentation. These are all done. We just have to pull your data into a pipeline and then push it into these recipes at whatever cadence that you want. So you can work with us and we can basically kind of be the guys behind the scenes that you own all these reports and recipes. We take no credit for them. There's no logo on these. Your agency goes on that. So they think that you guys are the ones that build it. In reality, you did, right? Because we're taking your ideas. We're just helping you with the technology side of things to build these pipelines for you. And then the final way is, um, you know, if you don't want to work with us directly on a consulting basis, we also have a tool. Uh, it's live at query.recipes. That allows you to just set up some of our recipes that we've already done. So you can just run a website quality audit for one of your websites, um, you know, just kind of like a one-off. You can set it up to run monthly. It's cheaper, but again, you're going to have to do a lot of the work yourself. You don't. There's no coding required to use query recipes, um, but if you're looking for something mo more robust, I would definitely say to work with us directly, um, and I'll give you some more information on that right now. So the way that our service works uh, is, first of all, you sit down with David, and this is Andres. We have a, a whole team of consultants that help to understand what data platforms you're using and how, uh, what are your current processes for reporting, for deliverables, for ad hoc analysis, and what silos can we combine? Do you want to combine your AdWords data with Search Console data to look at how organic search and PPC are impacting each other? Which keywords you can stop bidding on? We can automate that for you. Uh, do you want to do your own technical SEO audit? We can automate that for you. Do you have uh, a funnel analysis that you want to get done? We can automate that for you. We just sit down and you tell us exactly what's on your mind and we help translate that to BigQuery. So then our team will actually go in and set up the BigQuery database for you. So you don't have to you know, know SQL or Python. We have a team that will do that for you. Uh, we'll build the database for you, pipe all your data in, and then you own it, right? You have access to the database. Um, it's yours. The data all up there is yours. It's completely private. So after that, uh, we'll set up a, a suite of recipes for you. Again, you can either use the ones that we've already built for you, uh, or you can customize and build your own just, again, based on what you're telling us and during the analysis process. And then after that, we just automate and manage the pipeline for you. So again, if you want to send reports to clients automatically, if you want uh, reports run internally for your team automatically, We'll set it up to do that, and then we'll just be standing by on a very low retainer to help you manage this pipeline and continuously build more stuff if you want as well. So uh, the pricing for this is is very simple. We work on sprints. Uh, the first data pipeline recipe is a three-week sprint. Uh, it costs $5,000. We set up the entire pipeline for you and a recipe with you as well. Uh, most of our clients choose to use a couple of recipes uh, because, again, you're probably going to want to build out a suite again. But think about it this way. The, if you're balking at the price tag of you know, fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. First of all, the cost to build this for software would cost you five times that. We're basically building you every recipe is a piece of software that we're building you. Uh, second of all, you should be billing a lot more. If you have a custom audit, we actually charge our clients for a website quality audit for a run. We charge them ten thousand dollars. Think about that for a second. You would pay us five thousand dollars to set up a website, a custom website quality audit for you, and then you can go out and charge ten thousand dollars for that. It's all about how you market and position it, right? So we're out here selling these to clients. Uh, it's costing us thirty dollars to set them up. That's all our hard costs are for them. Uh, aside from our team's time, obviously, and we're marking it up like crazy because of the value. So if you really want to get off this, this concept of selling your time as a consultant and moving to a value-based system in terms of how you charge, you've got to be able to add that value. And how do you add that value? Through unique capabilities. So if you've got an idea or a concept that you wanted to build into a tool, but some software company was going to charge you 150 grand to build it, talk to us first. <laughs> we can do it for a couple thousand bucks. It'll save you a ton of money. And then after that, like I said, we're standing by. We, uh, you know, we're your dedicated consultants for anything, data, automation, marketing, sales. Uh, we're here. So 
Uh, again, uh, I appreciate you guys sitting through. This was a little bit long-winded. This is the first time I've actually gone through this presentation. You can tell I'm a little bit excited about it because I've been bottled up wanting to talk about this forever, and I finally got the outlet to do so. So um, as always, guys, I appreciate your attention. I appreciate you trusting us with your email, and uh, I would love to work with you. David would love to work with you as well. I don't want to speak for him, but I know he would. So uh, there's a button below here to schedule a consultation with David. Um, completely risk-free, no money involved. We'll talk about your agency. Uh, we'll talk about your current processes, any ideas that you have. And then David will be able to tell you exactly how we can build that pipeline for you guys. So hit the button below and hopefully I'll see you guys on the other side as a CIFL client. Peace, y'all.